So you know that project that you finally get around to and you're like, I'm super excited to do this. Well, that's how I feel about this cart. I've been calling it a bar cart, but it's really not a bar cart. I mean, it could be a bar cart, but we're not gonna turn it into a bar cart. We're actually gonna turn this into a tea station. We drink more tea and coffee in this house than we do alcohol, which is unfortunate, I think. <laughs> there is some rust on the, the metal part here, these handles. So I'm gonna use a rust remover and see if that you know can kind of shine up these handles and I might just spray paint over it, but we do gotta at least clean it first. So let's get started. We're gonna take it apart, then figure out what we're doing to the shelves. Oh, and you see my chair back there. I'm still not done, right? This is crazy. I think I might just have to leave it like this. <laughs> This is another one of those projects that sat in my garage for years and it was only $6.99, but knowing me, I probably had a coupon. And you can see that the shelves are starting to become concave. It just really needed a good makeover and a good rust remover. So for this project, we're probably gonna use this marble paper. Um, it's, I mean, it, this is like handcrafted paper, guys. It is freaking amazing. The color in it is just gorgeous. And I really wanted to line these shelves with this paper, but the shelves are kind of bumpy. So when I take it all apart, I'll probably just cut some new pieces of wood for here and then mount the paper onto the shelves. But I'm gonna take it apart. And for that, we need to use a wrench. I got metal rods. Sweet. Who knew that it was connected with a rod? No idea. This is part of the fun of actually breaking down furniture and see how they put it together. So what we should do is put all of our little bolts into a plastic baggie because I am infamous for losing all the bolts when I'm working on a project. It just happens. Okay, so we have the old shelves, we have the two handles, the two side pieces, and we have some really rusty bars. This is what was holding up the shelves. So we are gonna put a little bit of rust remover all over these. We do the metal legs had this really sticky stuff that just needed to come off the laminate. And so I just used a razor and just peeled that stuff right off. So this is the part I was really, really excited about because I've never used rust remover before, but there was a company that sent me a free sample of rust remover gel and I thought, hey, why not? This was the perfect project to use it. And so I wiped it on. The instruction said to leave it on there for probably about 24 hours. I decided to leave it on for three days, only because I got busy and I didn't have time to work on the project. So I left it on a little longer and it really worked for me. But anyway, after I was done wiping it on, the instruction said, make sure it does not dry. So I wrapped it up in this piece of painter's plastic and just let it sit in the garage for mm, three days. It was a little smelly, but it wasn't too bad. So once that was done, I can move on to the next step. Here's where I got a little confused. I wasn't sure what color to paint these pieces of wood. These are the pieces of wood that go along the shelves of the cart. So I tried silver samples, didn't like that. I tried bronze, didn't like that. Tried white, yep, that's a match. So we're gonna go with white. So fast forward about three days and I could tell that the rust remover gel was working really, really good. I'd rub my finger over the plastic and I mean, it literally would just sort of come off the surface of the metal. So I knew that this was gonna work. I took an old rag with some soapy water, wiped it down and it didn't require too much elbow grease, which is what I liked. So I then followed it with 220 grit sandpaper, making sure that I wore a mask, of course, cause you don't wanna breathe that stuff in and then followed it with triple zero steel wool. Now I wanted it to shine a little bit more. There were some spots that just didn't look very good, but compared to what we started with, this was looking fabulous. So I was not going to spray paint this. We were just going to restore this metal and it looked great. I added a few coats of glossy white paint to the wooden trim around the shelves. And then I realized, oh darn, I forgot to put the rust remover gel on the bolts. We can't leave those rusty. So I put a little bit on there, put them in the baggie, left them overnight, and the next day they were good to go. For this project, it was a no brainer. I was gonna have to make new shelves. There was no way I could reuse these. The only thing that was confusing is how I was gonna recreate this little edge piece and have it slide on appropriately. So I measured it and then figured out, okay, let's use some underlayment. Now this is typically used with flooring, but it was thin enough at a quarter inch and cheap enough, I think it cost like six bucks, in order to make 
the new shelves. So I just laid them down as a template. That was the easiest way. And then cut it out with a circular saw. And then I had to figure out how was I going to make this little line? How was I going to scribe a line? And so I made some adjustment with the circular saw and was able to make a really, really narrow cut. And you can see here, this is what I needed to create. And by the time I used my circular saw, I was so happy because I figured out how to do it. Boom, right there. Check it out. And now it's time to glue the paper onto the boards. Seriously, this paper is phenomenal. It's gorgeous. So I cannot wait to see what this looks like. All right, so we're gonna spray this first and then we'll spray the board. We're just gonna coat it. I don't know if I wanna coat it too much cause I don't want it to like totally soak in. Make sure you're spraying the right side, the correct side. We're gonna let this set for a minute and then we'll come back and we'll adhere the two of them and hopefully get a good bond. All right, so now we're gonna lay this down on top of the paper, trying to make sure that it's lined up. Just gonna press it down really good. You might wanna invest in a brayer. This will help to roll your paper out. Get it nice and non-bubbly. So I repeated this same process for the top shelf and for the bottom shelf. If you look closely, you'll see that line there that I scribed on the edge of the board. So I took my fingernail and just ran it along that line, just creating that ditch. And then I took a box cutter and actually sliced the paper. So then what I did was I tried to put on the edge piece. The paper, of course, was a little too thick, so I did make some adjustments there, but I was able to get those pieces on. I was able to get the side pieces on and use the box cutter to just trim any leftover paper that you could see on the bottom of the shelf. I didn't paint the bottom of the shelves just because there was really no need to. I mean, why? Why would I need to do that? But I think it looked pretty good. And by the time I had both of them done, I was ecstatic. Oh my God, guys, these shelves are so freaking pretty. This paper is perfect. And I swear, I think I need to get some of this and just frame it and put it on my wall because it's so beautiful. So this is where things got really interesting. So you see these sample boards that look nice and glossy. Well, this is the look that I was going for on the cart. So I went to the store and I bought some epoxy, but then I realized this wasn't gonna work. Here's why. I did several sample boards. Always do samples of your work before you do your actual piece. Well, you see here it's yellow. Hello, that's not the look we're going for. I thought it was an interesting look, but no, we're not looking for something to turn the paper yellow. So instead I decided to go to the hardware store and I got some glass cut. It was literally 20 bucks. Perfect choice, got it home. And surprisingly, I actually took good measurements. <laughs> I was surprised, it actually fit very nicely. And I was ecstatic. This was exactly the look I was going for. Moment of truth. Did I measure properly? I did. Sweet, oh my gosh, that looks so freaking good. Oh. <gasps> So you can see why I was excited. This does not even look like the same cart. I mean, the rust is gone. It looks pretty. It's just beautiful. And I absolutely love it. I do have to seal it. I did not seal this paper because I was worried about putting something on it that would turn it yellow. So I do need to do a little bit more test with some samples just to make sure that it it's going to maintain its color because I do not want to put something on it that turns it yellow. But look at this. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. I love it, love it. I'll tell you what, I'm dying over this project. I freaking love it. You know those projects where you just get so excited because it turned out? That's how I feel about this. I knew that the cart was gonna look good, but I didn't realize it was gonna look this good. So this was a success, and I'm surprised that I didn't have any like major blunders. I usually have something that goes wrong, but this was like, almost perfect. No problems. <laughs> that never happens. Anyway, if you love this project as much as I do, give it a thumbs up. 
be sure to go back to thriftdiving.com. If you are not subscribed, you are missing out because you will get five eBooks and printables and checklists, things that will help get you started with DIY and doing your own projects. All right, now I've got to figure out where I'm gonna put this in my house. I guess at some point I'll need to figure out what to do with all these projects. But for now, I'm going inside because it's cold out here. Bye.